CNBC TV 18 and Intel present Business Comes Alive, Intelligence Everywhere. Welcome back. We will now have an insightful panel discussion on Digital Future of Education, Road Ahead. The discussion will cover the future of learning and education enabled by digital technologies and the way forward for edtech companies. As part of the panel, we have Bhaskar Dhantapani, Director Sales, Intel India. RCM Reddy, MD and CEO, Schoolnet. Sudhir Goel, Chief Business Officer, Acer. Gaurav Gupta, Chief Growth Officer, Step. Dr. Hrishikesh Senapati, Director, NCERT. Hello and welcome to Business Comes Alive, Intelligence Everywhere, presented to you by CNBC TV 18 and Intel. Well, India is witnessing a massive shift towards digital learning with government initiatives such as Deeksha, Swayam and e Chala created to benefit both teachers and students in enabling a centralized and robust educational resource and infrastructure. While on the other hand, India's ed tech sector has also come up with innovative learning solutions and platforms that integrate the smart use of digital technologies to enhance the teaching learning experience which have become especially useful during the COVID-19 outbreak. And that is the context for this discussion titled Digital Future of Education Road Ahead. We have a diverse panel with us to explore where we go from here when it comes to the future of education in India as digitalization becomes the mainstay. So let me introduce them to you. With us is Gaurav Gupta, Chief Growth Officer, Step, which is a not-for-profit initiative that gathers partners on a universal collaborative platform to reimagine learning opportunities for every child. Next up is RCM Reddy, MD and CEO of Schoolnet, which develops effective tools and solutions in education and vocational training. Also with us is Sudhir Goel, Chief Business Officer at Acer India, which has been involved in equipping lakhs of teachers and students with laptops and tablets to help them teach and learn better. Dr. Hrishike Senapati, the Director of National Council of Educational Research and Training, or NCERT, also joins us to talk on policies and programs that NCERT is involved in to improve school education. And finally with us is Bhaskar Dhandapani, Director of Sales at Intel Technology India to talk about Intel's empowering role in infusing technology in education. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Education, always an important topic, especially in the, in the context of the current COVID scenario and the ongoing pandemic. So let me start first uh, on a broad scale. You know, what are the key trends emerging trends uh, that you see and models that you see in education uh, which are going to have a sort of a, a transformative effect and what are the challenges and opportunities in the hybrid blended learning model uh, that you see we'll start with you mr gupta on this so see i think the situation is unprecedented for everyone in terms of what has happened over the last six months uh, but what has also happened during this time frame has been that there have been many synchronous as well as asynchronous uh, modes of you know learning that have come in, and also you know few which have been blended in that context. Now, hence, what should be the solution or the approach going forward? I don't think there is a clear answer to that, and six to seven months is a very short time frame. But uh, what has happened, more importantly, is that while schools may have been shut, schooling has continued, learning has continued. Training has continued from the uh, homes of people or wherever they are. And uh, I think, uh, you know, one of the key aspects that uh, also comes through is that, you know, there are many actors who are out there for whom solutions need to be devised. There is a child who's at the center of all of this. Then there is a teacher, a parent, uh, a community member or an official, whether at the school or from the administration that surround the child. One has to think of solutions in their context, right? Whether from a learning perspective or from a administrative perspective. So I think many solutions will take shape as, uh, you know, the situation really evolves. Uh, what the pandemic has done is it has raised the question of whether our systems are resilient. And resilience can come through as we look at the future and we treat this as an opportunity. So the challenge is itself an opportunity, you know, as one looks ahead. And uh, I think there can be many solutions on top of it. Blended, of course, being a, you know, key part of it. 
All right, coming to you, Mr. Edit, and taking cue from what Mr. Gupta said, the model itself of education has changed uh, from a sort of a broadcast model to a collaborative model. So, what are you? What is your sense of the opportunity this uh, this hybrid learning model brings to the table? I think fundamentally we need to recognize the fact that role that the technology can play in addressing the issues related to education, they being related to scale standardization, quality, technology can play an important role to address these challenges, particularly in Indian context. But this digital divide is known to all. The digital divide between the poor and the rich, between Bharat and India, and haves and have-nots have always been known. And the COVID has thrown, has actually further accentuated this divide. And there are, uh, there are kids in the city schools who have access to smartphones, internet, and there are also kids in tribal areas who have been deprived of any learning during this COVID period. Therefore, what is required is an intelligent way of, to use the right word, Gautam, a blended uh, kind of model where you use technology appropriately, both for in-classroom and outside the classroom situation. And this has to work in an, in a, in an environment which doesn't have internet. It also has to work in an environment where internet is there. I think very, very appropriately customized need specific solutions need to be brought out. The very, very exciting times, the, the absolutely uh, heartening fact is that the state governments all across which are charged with the education and the uh, government of India uh, have been adopting technology at varying degrees. Of course, adoption of technology varies from state to state, but the trend is very, very clear. It's, the trend is upward. When it comes to the outside government schools, so-called B2C, using mobile first kind of approach you have been seeing the some of these uh, b2c companies edtech which have been attracting a lot of interest from the investors and acquisition etc but the challenge is that between these two models and the eventual objective has to be ensuring the learning outcomes the kids do learn all right and we need to have an intelligent and appropriate strategy that blends the technology with the real time situation which will ensure these learning outcomes are met all right, so we've got the enablers perspective. Uh, let's see what the NCERP has to say about it. Dr. Senapati, we are in the era of sort of micro personalization when it comes to when it comes to educational opportunities. So, uh, from that perspective, what are the what are the challenges that you see? Because India is a large country, and to 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 kind of service everyone is a huge challenge. So, uh, how does NCERP face up to this challenge? Uh, uh, thank you. I'm very happy to be a part of this program. Uh, during this COVID period, NCRT has come out, uh, come out with uh, many solutions. Uh, first of all, when this lockdown um, was declared, immediately we came out with an alternative academic calendar for the students. And there we have taken into account the learning outcomes. And because learning outcomes are the skills and competency, what we expect our students to attend. Then keeping in view the learning outcomes, we have uh, uh, given reference to the materials what is available in ePartsala, in Dikya, and in other portals. And uh, the, the, we have also given some exemplar so that teachers uh, uh, can guide the parents and parents can create a very conducive learning environment uh, using available uh, resources and uh, using uh, the um, internet, mobile, whatever they have. And even for the students who are not having the smartphone, for them also we have made some provision. We have prepared that guideline for the teacher and they have guided the parents how to uh, create conducive learning environment using available uh, resources so that they can take care of the mental health of the students along with the physical health and other also they will they can also take care of the learning and similarly we have also come out another uh, guideline that is the learning enhancement model for the students who are not having the basic facilities those, those who are deprived and how school with the help of community can guide the children and send some uh, worksheet, note sheet, um, uh, etc., some uh, materials. So at least meet them weekly, teacher may visit, parents may visit, some interaction, some assignment, some task, some project, so that all the children will be engaged and so that they can do something on their own. And that is the purpose of, because the main purpose of learning is that they should construct their knowledge. And technology is a main, technology is a medium. And we have used technology as a medium where the children are having the facility. They have taken advantage of this alternative academic calendar and they have used it pro properly. Those are not having also, for them also, we have made some provision and state governments are following those guidelines and taking advantage of these guidelines. 
and during this period we have come out with alternative academic calendar we have uh, come out with another uh, guideline for online learning pragyanta that means that screen time should be less so that student can take advantage of it and they can use their own learning resources and learn in their own way they can uh, think critically and organize the material uh, keeping in view their need and their requirement and along with that also learning enhancement guideline for the students who are deprived who are not having anything how they can learn and how uh, our teachers and parents can facilitate learning in that environment that also we have taken care of during this period oh all right so let's let's get in the product ecosystem perspective on this question of uh, you know the challenges and opportunities which uh, uh, you know hybrid learning model provides uh, mr goel coming to you you know interoperability balanced with personalization it's a huge challenge so from a product ecosystem perspective uh, what are the challenges and the opportunities you see in this space uh, thank you adam uh, as a market leader of the it solution provider in education segment we have been co-working with most of the education service provider uh, for the last two decades and uh, we have seen how the digitalization has evolved over a period of time uh, the pandemic of course has thrown a different kind of a challenge and, and that also implies the opportunities uh, as uh, mr reddy mentioned there is a digital divide therefore the needs of the different kind of a student will be different today each student will need a device whether he is in the kindergarten or he is in the he is doing a post graduation whether he is in the economic strata on the top of the pyramid or on the bottom of the pyramid everyone needs a device but the need would vary uh, for someone who is uh, more of a data consumption or a content consumption would require maybe a different kind of a platform while the one who is actually in a higher education may need to do a lot of processing would require a higher performance so as a it solution provider we need to ensure that we are able to offer the differential solutions to meet both the poor and rich meet both the performance and the value uh, solution that is uh, what is required as far as the individual device is concerned as i mentioned each and every, uh, earlier maybe one device one pc or a notebook was sufficient enough for a home but today with work from home and learn from home working in parallel i think the need is to have one individual device the second i think as uh, as and when the school starts opening and i'm hope uh, it happens fast uh, the model is going to change as uh, as someone earlier mentioned it's going to be blended education implies both a combination of the physical classroom as well as uh, uh, learning from home or let's say online learning and the solutions which will evolve there has to be a flexibility of solution depending on the size depending on the location depending on the affordability of the various solutions we as a it hardware provider along with the technology provider like intel has hmm. geared up for that both for the smart class as a solution to offer uh, that uh, digital uh, digital education from the classroom as well as uh, the individual content uh, consumption devices uh, with the individual student uh, the technology will play an important role and i am hmm. sure uh, because of the pandemic the digitalization in the education will move at a much faster pace we have seen the new education policy been announced and i am sure the implementation both by the central government as well as by the state government will be at a much faster pace having seen the problem which uh, mm. let's say most of student um, uh, encountered during the last 7 to 8 months of the pandemic all right that's actually going to be my next question uh, to all of you but before that i'll uh, get mr dandapani's views on you know intel's contribution intel has had quite a quite an extensive engagement in india when it comes to uh, educational initiatives and empowering the sort of next generation of innovators so from the intel perspective what are the challenges and opportunities that you see when it comes to a sort of blended learning model yeah so taking a step back uh, going to school it's not just learning the subject it is a social activity it's a personal connect in the pandemic situation with the uh, personal connect is not there has put a lot of pressure on the student teachers and the parents as well i am confident that uh, the technology led solution will be the uh, powerful way to uh, get the ecosystem right yeah so our our primary job is to help our customers like acer or schoolnet to get to a solution in a quick time frame so how do we do that uh, we have uh, developed the ecosystem partners 500 plus who help our customers to get a customized solution in hardware and also in analytics um, and then quick time frame how do we go and deploy it so be it a, a, a smart projector or a, a smart classroom solution so that's where intel plays a major role in um, uh, bridging the gap between the technology and what is required in the market 
All right. And getting back to the topic of uh, NEP 2020 and the fact that it was seen as a, as a sort of a vision statement of creating India as a knowledge hub, and especially the fact that, you know, there's been an increase in uh, investment when it comes to the education sector, which is, uh, which is around 6% now versus 4.5% earlier. Uh, the factor of digitization, you know, what sort of strategies uh, do you think need to be focused on as part of NEP 2020? When it comes to the question of digitization, considering, you know, we need to build new learning models and skills development and education broadly as well, not just from a primary education perspective, but also from a skills perspective. So I'll get Mr. Reddy's view on this, on you know, how, how this question needs to be addressed first. Mr. Reddy. Yeah. Thank you. I think this is the one of the most brilliant documents, the NEPI, very comprehensive, very futuristic, also addresses some of the fundamental problems. Now, in the context of technology that we are talking about, uh, the NEP, NEP's objective is being realized through technology. If we frame that question as the as a sort of question for debate, I think first of all, what we need to do, universal access for the students to a device. Device could be mobile, device could be a computer inside a classroom, or it could be an integrated device like what we have. I think there are large number of schools and where students pass out without having seen a computer. This is a reality, mind you. So first of all, the NEP under NEP, the actually action should focus on providing such universal access. Today, mm. the device and internet access are like primary. This is like a midday meal. You go to this school and how midday meal plays an important role in child's retention and ability to learn, I think access to technology has become equally important. And first of all, my first recommendation is that collectively the states and center should focus on ensuring every child has access to uh, the technology, number one. Number two is that technology itself cannot be a solution. I think technology, a device for the sake of device is not going to address. It has to be completely aligned with the learning outcomes. If this is a means to secure the learning outcomes, then what are the enablers that needs to be there? I think there has to be an ecosystem created in every school around that, which means the device, there is a digital content which is mapped to the curriculum as the Mr. Senapati's institution has been doing brilliant work. And that being at the core, it has to be mapped to the content. It has to be in vernacular language. The teachers need to be trained to teach. There have to be analytics, all right? There are to be measurements in terms of whether the students are learning or not. I think this comprehensive ecosystem needs to be put together around the technology in which device is one piece, content, applications, analytics, capacity building, everything. So when, second recommendation is that state specific, district specific, taluka specific, the implementation plans to be drawn up if we have to achieve uh, this objective of uh, what I said, universal access, all right? The third is, uh, can there be blended solutions? Absolutely right. We have been talking about internet being available. On this call itself, all of us joined from metros. We have been struggling in terms of getting stable internet connection. All right. We had to re rehearse half an hour before we got into the call. Just imagine a tribal uh, village in Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand. How do they struggle with? I think hmm. again, what we need to do is a blended model. All right. Yakestep hmm. has been doing brilliant work using technology doing. In school night, we have a patented device called k -Yon. K stands for Knowledge Yarn. It's an integrated device. Intel has been a big partner. Acer, Acer has been a big partner. And it converts one room into completely digital classroom. You don't require a separate projector, computer, uh, audio, a smart board. Any wall will become the smart board. And it, it is content sits inside. If there is internet connectivity, it can pull the content from the cloud. Otherwise, the content sits inside the box. It's internet inside the box. You can teach inside the classroom, take it to a hamlet, particularly during COVID times and schools were not functional. And many of these kayans and loaded with the content, teachers took to the villages and under any any wall, blank wall becomes smart board. You start writing on that board. It's a, hmm. it's a very, very nice combination of this. I think what I mean to say is that the using technology, we need to create a nice blended models, sort of flipped classrooms which can work in an environment, offline environment, online environment. I would suggest oh. three principal recommendations for this shortage of time. I would not get into the detailing, but these three principal universal 
creating ecosystems and devising high quality blended models that can work in a localized environment. I think these three around these three, if we can work out, then the technology will play an important role in realizing the objectives of NEP. All right. Excellent points, Mr. Reddy. And, uh, you know, from the from the lens of NEP 2020, uh, Mr. Gupta, uh, some of the points which uh, Mr. Reddy mentioned, uh, I get a sense that we, we are at an inflection point, which is powered by digitalization, where, you know, we usually talk about a company customer approach when we talk about digitization. But when it comes to education, we're now applying it to a, a student teacher framework as well. So uh, don't you see that as, as a key inflection point where we're actually discussing these things in a framework which has usually been reserved for traditional business. So uh, you know, do you think NEP is that vision document which finally changes the conversation comprehensively and sort of, you know, what are the strategies you think we should go ahead with to embrace that digitization? Right. So uh, Gautam, thanks for bringing that out. And actually Mr. Reddy made a lot of relevant points in the context. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I was also thinking about this being the inflection point, you know, uh, and uh, but the way I see the inflection point, you know, uh, what has happened is that over time, uh, I think, uh, you know, Mr. Reddy earlier spoke about the digital divide. And uh, a lot of times earlier, the perspective used to be that the glass is half empty. Mm-hmm. When I say that, what do I mean? That uh, we used to say that when, uh, you know, in the past, that technology is meant for the elite. And how do we, you know, bring out solutions which can really help the elite? But what mm-hmm. these times have done is that they have changed the question. And hence, we have started seeing the glass is half full, which is that technology has to also help everyone who's out there, including the underprivileged. And that's why, you know, a lot of points that Mr. Reddy mentioned in terms of how, uh, you know, access can be enabled, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, these are the things which really need to happen to uh, take this forward. But if one were to look at, you know, some of the other aspects of NEP, I think NEP also at its core spoke about the fact that one has to shift from rote learning to Mm -hmm. learning for competence. And I think, of course, Dr. Senapati will be an authority in terms of speaking about it. But, you know, from what I understand, I think given this inflection point where uh, once we have started seeing the glasses, you know, half full and hence what do we do to really enable and leverage technology and digitization to help everyone in the country, we have to imagine. And we have to reimagine. And that mm-hmm. reimagination might mean how is it that sitting in any nook and corner of the country, any child can have access to high quality teaching and learning material. And then mm-hmm. QR codes on the textbooks, which are, by the way, available uh, to more than 90% of children in the country, that's one way of leveraging small technology, which is like, you know, scan a QR code sitting on the chapter of your textbook, get to digital content, which can help, you know, you understand this topic a lot better, get practice questions. Schools may have been shut. I think teachers have been at the forefront of really, really uh, being the warriors at the front of it. But training of teachers has continued and technology has been a big lever in it. In fact, using Deeksha already almost close to 3 million plus teachers across the country have been trained. Mm -hmm. And it has been NCRT's program around Nishtha, which is to train a lot of teachers around uh, becoming, getting more enabled. You know, that has been happening, leveraging technology. Likewise, you know, how does One look at, you know, officials embracing technology and being able to take timely interventions versus waiting waiting for surveys and, you know, a lot of time that goes in uh, planning and making interventions, how technology can enable them to take timely action. You know, all of these things can happen. So, So I put it in this way, technology to learn, help learn and manage learn. These three are what, you know, can come about now. And this is the right time. This is the inflection point when we have started seeing the glasses half full. And, uh, you know, the, the journey looks really, really promising going forward. All right. Keeping up with that optimistic perspective, Dr. Senapati, as as Mr. Gupta has mentioned, uh, the focus has shifted from rote learning to active learning now, thanks to digitalization and considering the initiatives which have been in uh, in play. And there are lots, we are, as I mentioned, Deeksha, Swayam, e- Epartshala, there are many initiatives, QR code in textbooks. So from the lens of NEP 2020, how are you seeing things moving forward, especially when it comes to a strategy? Is it all coming together now to transform learning from rote learning to active learning? Uh, I would like to highlight that uh, our focus has been shifted from content uh, mastery to competency mastery. 
and our policy has taken care of this and policy is putting lot of emphasis on the development of skills and competencies and uh, in this policy when you see that you will find that uh, the policy is talking about the curricular reform pedagogical reform and assessment reform and when we are talking of the pedagogical reform and this pedagogical reform technology is going to play a very significant role and this artificial intelligence coding uh, computing all these are going to be integrated in the school curriculum and uh, from the pedagogical point of view you see that the uh, policy uh, recommend that experiential learning our children should experience and uh, under this experiential learning will find uh, art integrated learning sports integrated learning story based learning approach and ict integrated learning that is most important because the technology itself is not going to serve the purpose technology is a tool technology is a medium and we have to use technology in such a way that our students should be in a position to construct their own knowledge in their own way they should use technology as a means and they let let them explore using the technology let them uh, experience using the technology to let them create something using the technology so that is that is our purpose that when ict is going to be integrated in teaching learning that means it will create a different ecosystem and entire learning system that teaching learning environment will be uh, vibrant and uh, students will participate and they will they can share with anybody in any part of the world without technology they can share inside the classroom with technology they can share with anybody that is uh, that is one from pedagogical point of view from the assessment point of view that we are going to prepare holistic progress card and this uh, artificial intelligence based holistic progress card that is most important we are not going to assess only the logical mathematical knowledge of our students we are going to assess the, their uh, performance in different field and over their skills and competence what they have and that now we are putting emphasis on 360 degree um, assessment and there will be self assessment there will be peer assessment there will be assessment by the teachers so from that point of view technology is going to play very significant role we are coming out with a rubrics and e portfolio so we can maintain everything all the records and students can take advantage of this and whole everything will be recorded and transparent and they can know their strength and weakness and accordingly they will prepare then the next thing that the teachers teachers are the most important uh, uh, and teachers are going to play vital role and that is why we are preparing teacher we are uh, helping them to develop their uh, skills and competency and through nista program now we have launched nista program through on this dikhya and we are going to cover all 42 lakh teachers and uh, they are also we have modules on this uh, ict in on this ict uh, integrated amazon uh, technology so that is also going to uh, make our teacher professionally sound so they can make use of technology and they can create very conducive and learning environment for our students and ultimately this policy will bring about a change in the entire system of education and using technology we are going to achieve that thank you all right that's three thumbs up so far mr dhandapani your uh, your uh, your statements on this uh, we have been talking about you know what are the strategies that uh, the india's education sector should consider when it comes to embracing digitalization especially as learning models in skills development and education what's your sense of you know whatever views that have been shared by uh, by the rest of the panelists what's what's the intel perspective on this all the three panels have uh, panelists have already summed up very well uh, com- uh, comprising of uh, the complete nuts and bolts of how this is going to uh, get executed uh, if you want me to sum- i could only sum up here um, okay so the um, um, national education policy talks about how scientifically a student can learn subject from 6th grade itself uh, it's, there is a gives a lot of clarity on how technology adoption also can happen right so this can become successful by giving access to the student be it a physical lab or a virtual lab is one thing combined with what technology adopt for learning and also for assessment defines the success of this program so rest points are already covered by the panelists and i'm in agreement with that mr goel uh, you've heard all the panelists speak about uh, you know the impact of nep 2020 and especially when it comes mm-hmm. to transforming india's education sector what in your uh, opinion is 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 the is is the key strategy that they should be looking for when it comes to embracing digitalization especially when we are talking about skills development and education Sure. Uh, Gautam, uh, uh, with the internet penetration going to the nook and corners of the country, I think what we have observed, uh, not only in the education, but generally the aspiration value of the people uh, around the country, whether in the B-class town, C-class town, or in the rural, has become very high. I mean, they they want to adopt the technology, they want to uh, come closer to the new world. Uh, 
We have also seen that in the NEP, uh, the government has proposed the increased spend uh, of, of the GDP percentage going up from 4.8 close to about 6%. Uh, and all the panelists talked about the uh, digital, digitalization and uh, adoption of the technology. I hope that a part of this, both by the central uh, government as well as the state government, will be deployed for augmenting the digital infrastructure in the classrooms. Uh, because uh, I mean, that's the first thing which is required uh, for the blended learning. I think it is what um, is essential as we move forward um, in the years to come. And uh, unless the digital infrastructure, which is, let's say, if it's a smart classroom with a variety of solutions, we can come up depending on the school, uh, the location, the size, etc. Unless that is done, I'm sure some of these initiatives will not work. So the technological adoption would require the, and, um, both the state governments and the state, uh, central government to deploy some of these infrastructures uh, in the, in the uh, classroom. We have also seen the private uh, uh, schools adopting the technology much faster. But the, since a larger population is actually covered by the government that schools, both by the state and center, I'm sure the government will take the necessary step to uh, do that so that the adoption becomes faster, the new technologies can be adopted. Similarly, I think one of the points which we also must see is that as we are evolving uh, and becoming a, a larger uh, uh, economy, uh, our schools, our education system, our colleges should be able to compete at the international standards. So I'm sure yeah. with the adoption yeah. technologies, with the newer ways of <clears throat> monitoring the student the assessment, the teaching, the quality of the education will go up and we should be able to come at par with some of the developing countries. All right. Uh, coming to you, Mr. Reddy, mm -hmm. you, you, we've heard from a policy perspective, we've heard from a broad strategy perspective, but getting down to the brass tacks of the classroom, what is the secret of successfully streamlining a digital classroom? And I'd like to hear your thoughts on, you know, how an interactive or a smart classroom technology can transform this field of education. I know you spoke about Kayan, but broadly, how do you see the smart classroom technology transforming this entire field? As uh, Sudhir mentioned, uh, some level of digital infrastructure is hmm. the prerequisite inside a classroom. It could be in the form of any form of technology. It could be an integrated device like Kayan, what we have. It could be a smart panel. In fact, uh, recently a committee appointed by MHRD came out with a solution of a flat panel TV type. And uh, it could be individual personal devices like a taps being distributed to the students by some governments which they have done. In any case, there has to be at the core digital infrastructure. I think what is that we need to do is that a comprehensive mapping of schools, school by school, we need to map and then see for the given number of students, for the kind of learning that has to be delivered using technology, what is the minimum level of infrastructure required? This is like what you do for the roads. You know, I have been in the government for 15 years in Indian Administrative Service. Now I'm outside the government. What is that if you have to build the roads in a district you do? You go and measure. You look at the population, habitation, how much this habitation needs uh, water, say water supply program, for example. What are the sources available? Then you create, you design a system by which the minimum amount of water is made available for the uh, people living in that village through appropriate means. Hmm. Similar kind of mapping is required. It's high time that we actually do the school by school digital infrastructure mapping, look at the future five years, then identify appropriate solution without any bias to a particular technology and bring in which is most suitable and appropriate. This is one. Second is the access. And internet access, no digital classroom would work effectively if it is offline. Of course, there are solutions which I talked about, Kayan, which are offline. But can we prioritize the schools with respect to the providing internet access? As a part of Bharat Network and up to the panchayat level, the optical fiber is being laid. From there, can we take it to the schools? If you go to Mumbai Municipal Corporation schools or Delhi schools, there is internet connectivity, but how many devices it can connect? Can you download how high quality content? Very suspect. So it yeah. has to be appropriate, it has to be reliable. Second. Third is when we are talking about one fundamental uh, uh, point I would like to raise here. See, the Minister of HRD, the governments, everybody is for education. They yeah. are the ministries for education. They are not ministries for government schools education. All right. So any initiative that we do has to cover the schools which are outside the government. If you look at mm. the numbers, the affordable private schools, as a case in point, 
and uh, where they charge maybe around 1000 rupees a month kind of fee and 15000 to 1500 more than 75% of so called private schools fall under that category i think they are the ones which are actually getting lost between the government schools where the government puts in money and the high end private schools where the promoters and parents put in and these affordable private schools are losing can we actually also consider the requirements of these schools affordable private schools in the digital the, in terms of digital infrastructure expansion plans and create appropriate model there are a huge number of ppp models all right okay and you can put invest upfront and see the of that school pays over a period of time so what i mean to say is that entire country needs to be brought on a minimum service standards of digital infrastructure access to internet high quality digital content mapped to the curriculum and very very innovative student engaging last point is the personalized personalized learning we keep talking about all right it's extremely important today technology can do x step can vouch for that personalized learning is the most important in a classroom there are 100 students and the top 10 and remaining 90 why is that those 90 cannot be brought to the remaining 10 and which means we need to know in this journey of achieving the competencies in the language of dr senapati where each student is how do you actually move this from here to there i think those personalized learning solutions which artificial intelligence etc etc can do i think it's important we adopt those two map last point uh, uh, is that skills i think skills you mentioned gautam couple of times skills and education and skills you see that nep talks about the skill development being integral to the education reforms i am very 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 important in my view i would like to divide the skills into three parts one there are foundational skills there are employability skills and there are entrepreneurial skills all right we need to integrate embed these skills programs in the schools what they call kz to pz from the schools to the colleges unless it becomes an important element in the school education programs to college education programs we will continue to have the children coming out of this formal academic system without having these skills and how the technology can play like the covid again i'll just tie it to the covid during covid time we run india's largest vocational skills company called learnet skills joint venture with nsdc like the school net is faithful learnet is a joint with nsdc we came up with lot of digital content multimedia content which is put on uh, a cloud and wherever you have connectivity devices etc we try to reach out to them teaching simple employable skills it could be soft skills it could be english it could be domain skills there are dozens and dozens of programs that can be delivered through an appropriate model through skills education education technology also again plays an important role in skills development my point is that it's high time i would call it i'm very fond of saying in all public platforms i think we need to have village digital uh, development plan all right and focusing on right. education that's the way all right that segues that segues nicely to the question that i had for uh, for mr gupta it's about the lack of access right to learning opportunities which is a sort of a complex and multi dimensional problem which uh, which impacts the lives of children and uh, mr reddy had 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 some had given a broad action plan with specific action points and it's all about reimagining those learning opportunities and this is a space which uh, team eight step is working on extensively so adding on to the point which uh, mr reddy mentioned could you give us some specifics on what exactly team eight step is doing to to reimagine the learning opportunities that you can provide which can which can impact the lives of millions of children in india so sure, absolutely got them so uh, uh, thanks for you know the question very interesting in fact hearing uh, mr reddy speak about you know what can happen very very relatable and actionable you know inputs and insights from him uh, so at xstep uh, see uh, it was founded around 5 5 years back with the objective or the mission of enabling access to learning opportunities for 200 million plus children in india which pretty much means you know every single child in india should have access to uh, learning opportunities now as we dabbled with the question and you know when we looked at the fact that you know india is a diverse country you know a lot of us say india is a continent it's not just a country right so so there is diversity there is complexity and that told us there is you know uh, the thing that you know one solution cannot fit everything in terms of the diversity and the complexity that india has which meant that one has to look at something different and that led to the clarity that you know it is digital infrastructure 
which one has to you know put together so that uh, many solutions built together by samaj sarkar bazaar they can come to right because uh, people who are working at the grassroots they actually understand best in terms of what really can happen and hence uh, you know the team really focused on working with the government towards developing the digital infrastructure which can set the highways on which many solutions put together by samaj sarkar bazaar to help the children the teachers the parents the community and even the officials can really you know come together so that's what except really focused upon and what gave us confidence was the fact that uh, you know when we looked around see the way gps came along now on top of gps maps came in google maps came in then you have uber so it you know there are examples like that out there in the world already and if you look at india upi has done that to the financial industry so so i think you know doing that for education became the mantra and uh, mm. working with the government very closely we helped develop that uh, digital infrastructure which actually is called diksha the platform so in 2017 the honorable vice president launched it and uh, over the last 3 years the journey has told us that you know it is something which can really help many solutions fly on top of it and that's why today you know uh, we see that over the last one year in fact the, the acceleration has been so much that we have seen already a 1 billion learning sessions uh, being mm. delivered via diksha just over the last you know few months since covid so that has been you know the way you know uh, the digital infrastructure has been able to uh, pave the way for many uh, solutions in the country and that is what the organization really focuses upon working with the government helping them as one of the part All right. And speaking of infrastructure, Mr. Dhanrapani, Intel has been engaged in the education space with a lot of programs. Uh, there's uh, there's Intel Teach Elements, uh, laptops provided uh, for 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 various programs. Take us through some of the key programs and technology enabled solutions that uh, you see Intel enabling in the education space for our viewers. Sure. At uh, Intel, we have launched a program by name uh, PC Pathshala. This is to enhance the learning experience, uh, working from home or learning from home. uh this is by uh, equipping the uh, student parents uh, teachers and of course the community uh, uh, by a cohesive industry initiative uh this is a one stop hub for uh, skilling yourself with the right tools and content to enhance your experience and this is uh, majorly fueled by the accelerated learning method for uh, um, artificial intelligence and also the proliferation of uh, high speed internet is one thing Uh, mm-hmm. and second one i want to talk about is um, a for youth and responsible a for youth right with the help of um, um, ministry of education uh, we understood uh, the ai as a, as a subject is in the initial stages of getting adopted as a formal um, curriculum so we co developed uh, the curriculum with the help of the ministry and then also did a train the trainer program and with this help uh, in, in in training the uh, teachers Uh, we reached out to mostly um, more than 80000 students in terms of how do we um, skilling them in terms of uh, what is ai and what is ai etiquettes and also uh, helping them to develop programs for the social problems right and with the help of uh, uh, national electronic ministry of national electronics uh, we also developed a program for government schools um, responsible ai and uh, more than 50000 students have registered from 35 states these are some uh, programs which i would like to highlight here All right, uh, uh, Mr. Goel, uh, from an Acer perspective, could you share some details about the innovative and unique products and solutions which uh, Acer is using to enable digitization of education? Yeah, Gautam, uh, I think uh, part of it was covered by Mr. Reddy and Mr. Gupta that uh, can't have a solution which is one shot uh, fit all. I mean, there are variety of schools; they have a different uh, kind of a classroom sizes, so you can't have you have to have a variety of solutions. Can is definitely one of the solution i mean we have work with the we are also co working with school net but at the same time what we realized was that every school will need a different kind of infrastructure so we have come out with a variety of solutions uh, we have the solutions uh, which is a uh, intel i mean we co work with intel developed a ops solution uh, with the interactive side panels right from the size of 65 to 85 and we want to make sure that this is future ready that means that it should be able to do the capturing of the order what the teacher is writing i mean that it should be able to connect that means the teacher has a device he can move around in in the classroom and uh, you know can uh, can uh, can show the content from the the connected device for, uh, to the interactive panel uh, it can take the note so it has got a variety of features so that as and when the ai is built on by the uh, education content providers or the school management softwares you know it should be able to make use of that 
similarly uh, we are co working uh, still not developed but i think hopefully we'll be launching for, uh, soon a smart projector solution with the intel compute stick uh, it will again be the future ready where we will be able to have streamlining of the various uh, natural language processing we'll have the automatic speech recognitions because we i feel that digital infrastructure deployment is the first step but as we move towards the personalized learning which i think mr reddy talked about we will have to monitor and then try to uh, differentiate between the students based on their uh, you know maybe the facial expressions you know whether he's attentive whether he's happy whether he's sad and hence we should be able to con uh, to control qualify the teachers and the quality of the content is being delivered so all these solutions we are developing should be able to uh, let's say take care of the future needs as and when we deploy the ai tools in the uh, in the content uh, similarly we also realized that during the covid we realized that there is a bottom of the pyramid i mean which uh, because of the uh, learn from home will need a mobile device uh, which is let's say uh, which can uh, read the content but at the same time affordable again co working with the intel we launched a uh, affordable intel pentium gold um, based notebook uh, which is available uh, you know especially for the rural and the semi urban towns so that even a uh, student uh, which is of a uh, let's say lower economic strata they can also afford so depending on the needs we have offered the flexible solutions to meet the customer demand similarly for the uh, students especially in the uh, post graduate and who have to do a lot of processing or high performance we again launched the 11th generation uh, intel uh, uh, based notebooks to make sure that those people get the performance what they deserve so as i said variety of solutions to meet both the classroom solution or the smart class solutions as well as the individual device solution so uh, to meet everyone the requirement as and when they need all right coming to you dr sinabhi the, the government has plans to set up a new autonomous body called the national educational technology forum or netf uh, which oversees capacity building develops e content and provides a sort of a platform for educational institutes and stakeholders to share best practices leveraging technology how will ncert synergize with netf to bridge that digital divide in education uh thank you uh i think ncert is doing the same thing because uh, you know we have one constituent unit central institute of education technology oh, where mm -hmm. uh, we conduct research develop different materials and also provide training to teachers on educational technology and conduct uh, different extension activity to disseminate uh, best practices uh, in the name of ict mela etc and here the uh, this uh, technology forum also will do same thing but uh, it will uh, take into account both school education and higher education and currently we are working on higher education from class 1 to class 12 and all our materials what we develop Uh, the the textbook what we have all the textbooks are available uh, in uh, digital mode and all other materials also and he, the, uh, the ncert uh, is limited to school education and this uh, forum will take care of both school education and higher education and will work together and definitely uh, it we uh, it will uh, provide better opportunity to all uh, so it will also help in capacity building we are also doing the same thing capacity building we are providing uh, support to all the states and preparing the professionals who can prepare the portal like uh, and the, who can digitize their textbook and other things and see in the same way uh, it will also contribute but the scope will be definitely better because uh, it will take into account both higher education and school education from all right and a quick update from you dr sinapati on the on, on the topic of digitization of textbook how far are is an is ncert in terms of digitization of all education related curriculum uh, all our textbooks have been digitized okay. and it is okay. available in e parsala free of cost anybody can download and along with okay. the textbook supplementary matter around 600 textbooks are available in e parsala and uh, we mm -hmm. have also given qr code to all these textbooks so all these are available free all right we're almost out of time so let's get in the summary statement from uh, each panelist a 20 second summary statement uh, going forward what in your opinion are some of the exciting and new technologies that will revolutionize education and more importantly its delivery in 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 countries like india we'll start with you mr gupta 20 second answer on this okay so a quick one uh, i think see the future uh, has many exciting possibilities the way we look forward uh, Uh, i think many solutions can come through where the where the ecosystem can participate samaj sam, sarkar bazaar coming together on top of digital infrastructure to carve out solutions which can help learn with helping learn and managing learn i think these three learn help learn manage learn many solutions around that 
uh, that that uh, seems to be the future and it's quite exciting and promising all right mr reddy your view on this competency focused personalized in classroom outside classroom solutions that will combine a technology and non technology mediums as enable us to secure the learning outcomes okay dr senapati should be integrated with pedagogy technology alone cannot serve the purpose because technology is a medium and uh, when we are talking about the technology we should see the technology in relation to content and pedagogy and uh, we should understand uh, the interrelationship between content what we are going to transact and the relationship with the technology and pedagogy if there will be perfect uh, uh, integration then definitely we can bring about a change in the entire teaching learning process all right mr goel uh, i would say the future is uh, personalized learning uh, through the ai tools and uh, of course uh, to optimize the huge infrastructure uh, the cloud cloud based content deliveries uh, are the two key uh, future uh, parameters or the future of uh, which india education system will see all right and uh, mr zandapani finally your summary statement uh, from the intel perspective on the future of education yeah the future of education is influenced by artificial intelligence which can give a personal touch by giving secure real time and personalized education all right well uh, the future definitely looks bright when it comes to education and with so many tools and opportunities uh, being available the future definitely does look exciting and the road ahead is is clear for a full speed uh, uh, roll ahead for the opportunities that a lot of people here in india will look forward to and of course when it comes to skills uh, you know the, the sky is the limit so it's been great talking to all of you this has been a, a wonderful panel especially to assess the future of education as as digitalization becomes the mainstay i'd like to thank all the panelists for for joining us and sharing with us their insights uh, on the topic and of course i'd like to thank the viewers for tuning in as well thank you for watching thank you to our esteemed panel of experts for those wonderful views our next session is decoding emerging bfsi technologies for business transformation To attend the panel discussion please return to the auditorium on the virtual platform